Two things I loved as a kid were video games and robots. And if you've ever written code for both of them before, you're probably aware that there's actually quite a lot of overlap. Both of them involve calculating collisions between objects and geometry and 2D and 3D space. We even use game controllers to drive our robots around and game engines to visualize them. But I bet you've never written code for a robot on a video game console. I mean, that would just be stupid, right? Well, that's what I've been doing lately. If you've seen my recent tutorials, you might have heard me mention that I've been using a new machine. And yes, it is marketed as a video game console, but it's also much more than that. So today, I'm gonna to try to convince you that whether you're a hobbyist, an educator, or a professional, that maybe you should give it a go too. But before you get too excited, I'm also gonna talk about some reasons why it might not be the right choice. And thanks to Weekly Robotics for sponsoring this video. Some of you will be very familiar with this device already and you can fast forward through the next bit, but for those who aren't, I'll give you a quick rundown. This is Valve's Steam Deck, and its main purpose is to allow people to play their PC games anywhere. Not like take your laptop anywhere, but truly portable. And internally, it's, it's just like a standard computer, albeit a very carefully designed one. I'll throw the specs up on the screen, but basically we've got an AMD APU, so that's a CPU and GPU combined, 16 gig of RAM, Depending on the model, you get 64, 256, or 512 gig of storage. Now the 64 gig option that I've got here is only EMMC, the others are NVMe, but if you want that bigger or faster storage, you can actually open it up and put your own drive in there. On the outside, we've got a seven inch 1280 by 800 IPS touchscreen. We've got a slew of buttons and trackpads. We can also see on the top, there's USB-C that you use for charging and also connecting docking stations. And on the bottom, something that we'll come back to soon is a micro SD card slot that you can actually boot off. The software that it runs is very interesting. In fact, we could spend a whole video just on that. On the surface, SteamOS appears to be a fairly typical console interface, but underneath, it's actually a modified version of Arch Linux. It's running some very clever software so that many games that were written exclusively for Windows and DirectX just run flawlessly. It's been out for over a year now, but here in Australia, they still haven't been officially released, and it's taken a bit of time for stock to trickle through to the grey market at a reasonable price. But we're here for robots, so how would one go about using a device like this for robotics development? You could of course try to use it natively. As I said, it's actually running Linux out of the box, so you can plug in a keyboard and mouse and monitor and just go ahead and try to install software. But you'll pretty quickly run into some of the limitations they've put in, especially if you want to use advanced things like Docker. Instead, it's easier to just install a whole new OS. You could wipe the boot drive or you could partition it, but there's another option. And that brings me to the first major advantage of this, the micro SD card slot. The Steam Deck can boot from a micro SD card, which might not seem all that special. But when I think about that, the first thing that comes to my mind is the Raspberry Pi. When it came out, it totally transformed the development of robotics and electronics. First for hobbyists and education, and eventually for professional industry too. And I think one of the big reasons is the micro SD slot. You see, for new users, Linux is scary. You don't know what distro to pick or what to install. You don't know what to do if you mess things up. You certainly don't want to risk bricking a good laptop. But with a Pi, you just grab an SD card, run the imaging tool, plug it in, and away you go. If you want to try something else or start over, you're only a few minutes away. For education, students can take a card, totally mess things up, and by the time the next class comes around, it's re-imaged with whatever software they use. There's no other leftover junk. And for professionals, it's gonna speed up prototyping. You can swap between installations easily, take a backup image whenever you need, and restore it again. There's a lot of flexibility there. And you see, I know that most computers can boot off a micro SD card, but I think a device like this that puts that kind of functionality front and center is quite powerful. Hey, it's Editing Josh here. Something I should have emphasized just now is that while this flexibility is fantastic for all the reasons I've just said, SD cards aren't really designed to be used as the primary storage device for an OS. Things will run slower and you'll probably kill the SD card before too long. So if you're gonna use this as a daily driver, you should install it to the internal drive. I plan to eventually replace the drive in mine with a better one and try to make a partition just for Linux. But for tinkering, teaching and testing, the micro SD is very convenient. Speaking of the Raspberry Pi, another huge change it brought about was standardization of hardware. Everyone knew what a Pi was. You knew what software worked and what didn't, and you could find documentation and help online. 
And I can just imagine the same thing here. Think how easy it would be to answer questions like, how do I install Linux? How do I install ROS? Will Gazebo work? Can I run Slam fast enough? I love the idea that the answer to that question could be, here is an image with everything you need. Put it on a micro SD card, put it in your Steam Deck, here's what'll work and here's what won't. Because not everything will work and we'll get to that soon. Of course, one thing that works just fine is the web browser. And with that, you can check out the sponsor of today's video, Weekly Robotics. Weekly Robotics is a free newsletter covering the most interesting projects, research, and news in the robotics space. It's a great resource for keeping up with everything that's going on. So if you haven't already signed up to it, make sure you head over to weeklyrobotics.com at the end of this video. The most unique thing about the Steam Deck though is probably its integrated gamepad. This kind of thing makes teleoperating a mobile robot a very smooth experience, much better than trying to hold a laptop in one hand and a gamepad in the other. There are some great professional solutions to this problem. Check out this one from Boston Dynamics. But these kind of things are often very expensive and really only practical at an industry level. Of course, there are plenty of alternatives. A little while back, I demonstrated a very janky piece of software that I wrote that lets you achieve this with a standard Android tablet and a cheap Bluetooth controller. I have an improvement for that coming, by the way. It's just taking a little while. But the Steam Deck integrates it so seamlessly. Like if you were a startup and you were trying to sell your robot to customers, you could just bundle the Steam Deck running your software and it would look really professional at a much lower cost than those dedicated devices. Speaking of cost, that's actually another score in the Steam Deck's favor. These days, to the disappointment of many, Valve's main business is the Steam Game Store and they sell a lot of games. Like other console manufacturers, the Steam Deck isn't sold to make money, at least not by itself. It's sold so that people will go and buy games off Steam to play on their deck, where Valve will make a lot more money. And so the Steam Deck is being sold at a really thin margin, especially the bottom model at $399 US, although I don't want to think about what I had to pay to get it over here. And so although there are some competitors out there like the Aya Neo or the ASUS ROG Ally, which was just announced, they just cannot afford to get anywhere near this kind of pricing. So is it all sunshine and rainbows? Should you stop this video right now and go buy one? Well, maybe not. It's worth taking a minute to look at some of the downsides. Firstly, at the end of the day, it's not that powerful. I mean, for what it is and for the power consumption and so on, it's amazing. But as far as a development workstation goes, a decent laptop or especially a desktop is gonna give you a lot more grunt. It also doesn't have Nvidia graphics, which means no CUDA, and that's gonna limit certain applications that are designed to utilize that special hardware. The integrated gamepad is great for applications that use it, like mobile robots, but for applications that don't, it's kind of unnecessary. And even if you are using it, there might be times when you've got the Steam Deck docked into the monitor and ethernet and that kind of thing, and it ends up being easier just to use a dedicated controller anyway. Support for the Steam Deck hardware in standard distributions like Ubuntu has been a little bit messy, but it's slowly improving. I've got the fairly recent 2204.2 on here, and it works pretty well, but there's no audio, the OS frequently locks up for seconds at a time, that might be something to do with the SD card, and it doesn't seem to handle things like sleep and battery management quite correctly. I've also heard stories about the Steam Deck killing SD cards. I don't know if that's just Steam OS, but in general, they're not designed for that kind of level of reading and writing. Finally, you don't really need it. For most people, a laptop is already satisfying their portable development needs. I don't actually have a laptop with a working battery, so for me, this is particularly appealing. And a lot of those other conveniences can be had through other methods, bootable USB drives, virtual machines, Docker, that sort of thing. With all that being said, while it might not be the perfect workstation, I think the Steam Deck has something to offer for everyone when it comes to robotics. Whether it's the hobbyist looking for something to tinker with, the teacher looking for a standardized platform, or the professional looking for an extra tool in their belt. As for me, I think it's fantastic, and I'm gonna keep using the Steam Deck as my workshop workstation for the next while. And of course, the best bit is that when you're done, you can just unplug it, crash on the lounge, and play some games. I wanna know what you think though. Do you think it's a revolutionary tool for robotics or just a gimmick? Do you want more videos about how to use a Steam Deck for robotics applications? Let us all know in the comments or over at the Articulated Robotics discussion forum. 
There's a link in the description where you'll also find information on how you can support the channel through Patreon. Thanks as always to those supporters for making this possible. And thanks again to Weekly Robotics for sponsoring this video. Remember to go sign up now. All right, I'll catch you next time. <laughs>